All right, good evening, everybody. Tonight we're meeting with Rene Romero Schuler. And Rene took the first Klein Artist Works course. And I think she's done really well with her career. You know, it's really difficult for me to figure out, um, you know, how much difference this class, this course, these 12 weeks together make for people. You know, I, I know that Renee's done really well, and I don't know that she wouldn't have done just as well if we hadn't done this, but I like to believe that the Klein Artist Works course made a significant difference in her career. So, Renee, you know, and, and Renee is the first person um, who's taken the course that I've had be one of our guest experts. And it occurred to me that it would be a good idea if you guys could more readily extrapolate from her experiences and what she did. And maybe we'll, you know, accost her with things that she didn't do. Um, and we can have a discussion about that. But, you know, I think it's been pretty good. So, Renee, I mean, the way we start this with everybody, as perhaps you remember, is I want to know where you went to high school and how you got from there, let's say, to the beginning of the course before we start talking about the course and what's come after that. Where did you grow up? Oh, wait, we have a problem. I muted you. I should not mute you probably, shouldn't I? Um, hold on a second. I'm sorry, darling. Um, all right, Renee, where did you grow up? <laughs> I grew up in, uh, in Chicago on the north side, Rogers Park. And how did you get from there to here? Well, um, I've always been doing art, and I was um, encouraged quite a bit along the way, and particularly in high school. I went to... Um, I went to five different high schools, but um, in Chicago, I went to St. Gregory's, and I went to um, Sen, and um, I sold my first paintings while I was still in high school, and um, it's, it's just, that was, that was all my plan involved, was just to continue going in that direction, you know, working in a gallery or, you know, just figuring out a way to, to just be in it. That's all my plan involved. And so right out of high school, I just started calling around trying to get commissions, you know, like companies trying to do paintings for their lobbies or um, that sort of thing. And so literally I sat with the yellow pages and just started calling. So how were things going before you took the course? Before I took the course, um, slow. I think the course really did help me a lot to um, just feel a little bit more empowered about my approach to things. You know, the whole idea of getting into an art gallery is, is very daunting. And, and mind you, I was I was represented before I took your course. I remember that. With one gallery. And before, prior to that, I had been with ARC Gallery for a short time, and that's obviously a co-op. Um, and, you know, I've done other things. I owned a gallery, you know, so I tried different approaches to making um, a career out of what I do. Um, but I think taking your course really helped me to think a little bit more clearly and come at things from a different angle um, in terms of, you know, really advocating for myself and understanding what kinds of things are truly available to us as artists. and and um, we need to we need to break those down and dig into those. I mean, if, but you guys, this isn't rehearsed. Renee and I haven't talked about you know whatever anything beyond let's do this. So that I'm not exactly sure where we're going with this, and this is fun for me too. I might so you, sabotage you, this. Yeah, right. You could. Um, so you, you talked a little bit about how it you know it enabled you to focus better and it showed you more of what the possibilities were. Let's let's go into those. Well, I almost, it, it, this sounds a little more esoteric than I really intend for it to sound, but um, I think it turned into sort of a karmic thing, you know, just um, first and foremost, you know, joining up in your group and putting myself um, in a group of like-minded people who all want to take their career at whatever stage it was in to the next level and, um that in and of itself is so motivating, and it, it sort of frees your mind a little bit, at least in my experience it did, and, and maybe that helped. So that would be one phase of um, how the course worked for me. But then beyond that, um, 
you know, things like, I mean, I can break down what, what you did in that first session, you know, with the um, critique of the work, you did it on the, the website, or on the video thing, and then we did, you know, the live crits, we did shows, you know, all of those things um, incrementally helped me to, um, I don't know, just focus on, on my approach on things. And, and not that I changed things real dramatically in terms of how I put myself out there, but I think karmically it opened me up to what was coming at me. I think before your course, I don't, um, I, I don't know that I recognized the doors that might have been there. Does that make sense? Yeah, kind of. Do you think you were more proactive? Do you think, I mean, that's, you talked about the doors, you know, besides being a really wonderful band. Um, what, what did you, what opened up? What did you learn? What, what were these new venues, possibilities? That's just it. I, I don't know that I can honestly say that um, your course made me more proactive because I've always been an extremely proactive person. Um, just by nature. I, if, if something's not working for me, I will find a way to make it work. Or I will just determine that it's not meant to work and move on to the next thing. And I've never, you know, slowed down. I've never sat and wallowed in, you know, uh, self-pity or, or self-doubt or any of those things. You know, um, I just keep trying to do the best that I can do and find a way to get it out there and, and hope for the best kind of thing. But I, I just don't know that I always recognized opportunities that may have been out there. So through your course, I, I did um, look into other things and, you know, put a little more thought into some different approaches. But the different approaches weren't that different from what I was already thinking. Because, I, I mean, one thing that I've said before is, um, this is, a, this is a weird business, you know, and you really don't get um, a lot of things for asking for them necessarily. I think the first thing that has to happen is you do good work and you have to feel good about the work and you have to, um, you know, just keep putting it out there, right? Yeah, totally right. Um, okay, so what, 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 I, want, I want some specifics. I sound like a girl. I want details. <laughs> okay, <laughs> on which part? Um, what things did you put out there? What did you do? What, you know, like, what did you do that, I mean, maybe we should talk about what's happened and then we can start filling, we can, you know, work back filling, so to speak. So, I mean, like, you had one, are you still working with the gallery that you had before you took the course? Yes. And they are where? That gallery is in Palm Beach. And you have other galleries now? Yeah, Miami, Paris, and Chicago. And how did, which one came first after you took the course? <clears throat> the first one after I took the course, I believe, I've had a few since I've taken the course, but they have since closed. So okay. I, I, I had one soon after in Michigan, and that one was just simply a friend of mine who moved to uh, Michigan and decided to open a gallery. All right, well, let's take another one. You've got a gallery in Miami. How did that relationship occur? That one happened um, in 2008 when the markets, you know, shifted and all that sort of thing. Um, things slowed down considerably for the Palm Beach Gallery, and she she uh, she closed the gallery that she had on Worth Avenue, which was the bigger money maker. Um, and she has a second gallery in Palm Beach Gardens. But okay. um, business was slow enough that she. Um, was really open to sending some of my work to her friend's gallery in Miami, who was doing a lot of business with people who um, were essentially unaffected by the markets and whatnot. They, you know, dealing with yachts and, you know, big money stuff, I guess. So she sent some of my work to her. And um, so the Miami gallery was doing business with my work. And um, one thing, I, and, and so this is a great situation where I, really took what I learned from you and, and your course and applied it to this situation. Um, nothing had been in the least bit articulated between myself and the gallery in Miami before any of that took place. And um, 
you know, I was, I think in the past, I probably would have just let that ride and I would have felt a little awkward and nervous to approach that gallery for fear that they might say, uh, we didn't really want to represent you and just, you know, Good point. later you know, we're done or whatever. Um, but I took an active part in contacting that gallery and um, I said that I think if if you're going to be putting my work out there on any level, I would like to solidify a relationship with you and um, let's talk about what that looks like. And thankfully, she was tremendously kind and receptive. And this is a woman who's been in business for 30 years. Um, so very respected and she's been doing this for a long time down there. Um, and she couldn't have been happier at my phone call. And we planned a meeting. She gave me a show during Art Basel Miami. And um, she continues to do a tremendous amount on my behalf, including uh, now she wants to do some limited editions. And she has a, a great deal of experience in that. She does all of the, the prints for Romero Brito, um, among others. But um, so she's been at it a long time. So it was really, really good that I got the nerve up to make that one phone call and, and be aggressive about making this a real relationship where I can put her on my resume, put her on my website, um, you know, and, sh and make sure that she gets me on hers, you know, that she's doing her part. And, and she's just been going right along. So that I absolutely got from you. All right. Um, and then you have a gallery in Chicago. Is that the next gallery with whom you still have a relationship? Yes. Um, so that one, um, the way that came about was um, – I have a collector here in Lake Forest who um, she's purchased a lot of my work and she has a friend who works at um, Loyola University Museum of Art and her friend asked if I would donate a piece for their annual fundraiser thing and I did and I, I donated a really nice piece um, which I think was probably the smart thing to do um, and it sold at the event. It sold right away to somebody who is now um, my best collector. Cool. And um, then from there, let me think for a moment. So that night at that event, um, I met several people, including, you know, obviously the person who bought my painting, but I met Jennifer Norback. And um, we spoke very briefly that night, but she told me that she was having an opening a, a week later. And um, I, I love going to gallery openings. So um, my kids and I went downtown and we went to that opening and she and I just spoke a little bit more. Um, and my son- Were you optimistic at that point about something happening with her gallery or? No, it never even occurred to me. Um, okay. I was there just to support her gallery and to support the artist <coughs> who, was, who was showing. I, I, I met him that night at, at Luma as well. So I just- went there to support him and took my kids to a few galleries and um, but while we were there um, this happened to be around my son's birthday and turn out, turn out, turn out. let me back up a minute how big was the painting that you had in the auction 30 by 30 and it was in a live or a silent auction that was in the silent auction okay cool and all right go ahead and you, so it was your son's birthday so my son, um, a budding young collector, um, saw something at Jennifer's that he really liked. Um, she had uh, she represents an artist who does these really cool duct tape pieces, and he had these football helmets made of duct tape. Um, they're like on canvas, and they're beautiful. Anyway, my son wanted one of those, and it wasn't overly expensive, so I decided that would be kind of a neat thing to get him for his birthday. So I bought it that night, and. Um, it was ready for me to pick up, I think, a couple weeks later. And when I went to pick it up, um, Jennifer and I started talking about um, what I do, meaning being an artist. And um, uh, she was talking about if I would be interested in doing, like, an art salon kind of thing. And so we were talking about that. And then before we were done with our conversation, she was giving me a show. Uh, which you saw back in January, um, and it was a solo exhibit. Um, and so basically, it started out. It sounds like by becoming friends or growing a relationship, and you know, getting more and more interested in one another. Yeah, 
you know, and I think show, showing interest in what she's doing, supporting her gallery in a, in a small way. I mean, like I said, that piece was not very expensive at all, um, you know, but it really made a, a, a huge impact on her. And, you know, it just, it opened up a conversation that might not have happened had I not bought a piece or something. I don't know. But, but one way or another, I, I mean, just being there and, and I love going to openings and my kids do too. So it all worked out well. But the, the solo show turned out amazing, and she sold more than half the show. Um, so ever since then, she's continued to represent me. Sweet. And then a gallery in Paris? How's your French? Uh, you know, I was just looking at the prices for Rosetta Stone. <laughs> yeah. I need to sell another painting to get that. But, um, but yeah, Paris. Um, Jennifer actually did that at the end of my show in January. Um, Jennifer was going to Paris and she, she used to work at galleries in Paris. She went to the Sorbonne in Paris and um, so she has a sister gallery there. It's her friend's gallery and um, I think she felt pretty confident that he would like my work so she brought some with her to um, Paris back in January and apparently he did like it so now he's representing me and um, uh, now I'm gearing up for a big show in uh, June and July with Tony Fitzpatrick, and um, uh, that should be pretty amazing. So you and Tony are showing in Paris? Yeah, and this is on the heels of his show at the Art Institute, so this is really cool. It is cool. Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pull up your website. Um, okay. I mean, I think people, you know, I think people should see what your work looks like. You can see your work now? Well, sort of. Sort of. Yep. Okay. Better? That's better. Um, okay. Now, um, has your work changed much since the course? This is, what, two years ago, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would say the work has evolved um, a, a, a lot. Okay. And where should I go? What's more recent? These are older. Um, okay, the most recent would be um, the sculpture and also the underpaintings. There are a couple different bodies of work, um, Transcendescence and A World View. Okay. So that piece is in the current show. And all right, so I feel like you've done, you, you, your website has changed since you took the course. What have you done? I hired somebody to do it um, for me, and um, I, I actually I had hired somebody else before this who did one on WordPress, but um, and that was a good, you know, very good functioning site. Um, but I wanted at the end of the day something that not everybody else has so i hired somebody else to do something that's more unique so that's what this site is it's um it's actually not quite done there are some things that need to be fixed on it but um that was just redone two weeks ago. websites are never done it's okay <laughs> exactly and what about photography photography is still not my strong suit obviously look at that one um that piece is long gone, unfortunately, so I don't have a good image of it. But um, I just suck at it, and I. So what do you do about it? How did you find a? How, you know, I mean, I know you found a nice a photographer you really like. That's what I want you to hear you tell me about. <laughs> yeah, I do have a great um, friend who's a photographer, and um, he's amazing when he's available. But. Um, no. He often is not, so I'm still kind of caught trying to photograph things. But um, the most recent development would be, um, you know, Jennifer is always looking for things to do for me. So she has hired an intern who works just for me. He does all of my administrative work. Um, and then there are two other interns there. She pays for that? Or, she, or does it doesn't cost that much because he's, he's an intern? Yeah, they're all they're they're she's got I think three or four interns. Um so collectively between the three of them, um, they, they are photographing the work and doing the edits on Photoshop. They're posting to my Dropbox files. Um so everything now is is much better than I've ever been able to do. Beautiful. What's on the horizon? Uh 
well, the Paris show um, is is the biggest thing coming up. But I do have um, I have a show up currently um, that's curated by Laura Cartwright, and that's at um, it's at Hotel Palomar, which is at Illinois and State. And there's going to be an opening reception there. Um, I think November 28th. And then um, after that, I have another show. That's going to be really cool. It's a collaboration between Jennifer's gallery and my friend Erica Hilton's gallery, um, which is around the corner. And uh, it's going to be called Body and Soul. So it's a group show, and Jennifer's got the body, and Erica's got the soul. Um, so it's kind of a neat thing to bring both galleries together. And um, uh, Erica, being the fun, spiritual chick that she is, has chosen a very auspicious date for the opening of 12 12 12. So those are the next two things. What day of the week is that? It's a Wednesday. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, all right, and what, is that's going to be one group show in two places? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, what have you done that didn't work? Oh, my gosh. I've done a million things that haven't worked. Um, since the course or before? I want to know mostly since the course, but we can go before, too, whatever. Well, you know, I, it's since the course, I, I don't know that I've done anything in particular wrong since the course. I think um, I've, I've been thinking a lot more about my approach to things. You know, I still want to get gallery representation on the West Coast and on the East Coast. So, um, How many galleries do you think you can handle? I don't think I can handle any more work-wise. I don't have enough work to put out there right now. But um, I, I would like to – I think I want to – change things around a little bit in terms of, you know, how I'm represented right now. Um, and I'm not, I, I have to put some thought into how that comes together. But, um, you know, obviously I think um, the East Coast and the West Coast would be good moves for me. I think that, you know, I have, I've got collectors in California and that's the funny thing, you know, what's really interesting that's happening in the last two months is how much work is selling just off of the internet. People off of who? Off of your side or Jennifer's side? Uh, both. It's crazy. Talk it's about crazy. it. What do you mean? How, how, how do these things happen? Do they, are these people who know your work or they don't know your work? I think um, I've been getting, you know, a lot of media coverage in, in magazines and stuff, um, just editorial stuff, and people have been looking them up, and so they're finding stuff that way, and they're buying it. How's the media? Heard, so they, these are people who don't know your art who are buying art sight unseen. Yes. Yeah. That's not too shabby, man. I don't know how that's happening, but it's happened four times in the last two months, and I've sold um, uh, three pieces to people in LA. That's cool. So maybe, yeah, you have, yeah. Hopefully, those people buy art from somebody in Los Angeles, and they have a decent relationship with a gallery, and somebody they go to the gallery. You got to see what I got. This Renee piece, I love it. Yep. Um, 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 how did the media coverage happen? That, um, it's just through networking, you know, people I know, um, my, you know. That counts, you know. Give me some specifics. Like you just had a thing written up in a North Shore magazine, right? Yeah. And that, you know, I've known John Carroll for many years. And um, just coincidentally, the, the new editor-in-chief of their um, North Shore magazine happens to be a collector of my work. And so she pitched to them doing a story in their premiere issue. So um, that story, and it's, it's, a, it's a great write-up, first of all, but um, I'm still getting emails from people who are just, like, some of them are just people saying they just love my work. You know, and it's just like the most beautiful thing you could ever get. Uh, but several of them are buying work just from seeing that article. Wasn't there a video recently? Yeah, that was um. A guy Where was that? What was that? That was um a guy named June Nagano, and he is doing a video project of his own called Bridge for Dreamers, and he's um kind of doing these video documentaries of anybody that he feels inspired by, you know, people who are living the dream, quote unquote. And um, uh, that's, it's his thing. So it's kind of neat. I didn't have to, you know, pay to get a video up or anything, but he did a beautiful interview and came to my studio all the way in Lake Forest and then um, did more filming in, in the gallery downtown and um, just did his little video. It came out beautifully. 
Yeah, it was really nice. Um, sorry. And prices? How what, how have your prices? Are they are they just as are they the same as they were before you took the course, or have they gone up? Uh, they've gone or up. down. <laughs> they they have not gone down, but you know everything's always negotiated. So you know, they, but they've gone up a bit. And all right, so all right, you guys, let's see if we, you guys must have other questions for Renee also. So I'm going to open up the floor in a second. Um, I thought your prices had gone up more than a little bit. Not so. Uh, I they they've gone up for sure. Yeah, they they really have. <laughs> have they doubled or less? I think less than double, but um, for close. I, I, I would say the biggest difference there is that I'm not handling it. I try to stay kind of removed from that a bit. Sweet. Do you, but no, what about, do you sell work yourself? I do, but I, um, I I give Jennifer a commission. What Can I ask what? And you don't have to tell me if you think it's improper, but I'm curious. No, no. Um, Jennifer has always been very forthcoming with, you know, trying to be fair on, on these kinds of things. So, um, and, and it hasn't been um, the same every single time, but if I sell something, out of my studio, I give her 30%. Okay, cool. She sells it in the gallery, she gets 50%. Um, but we have other arrangements that kind of run the gamut. I've given her 10% on one thing, I've um, given her 40% on another. It just kind of depends on the situation. But she has always been right there, you know, trying to so be. So basically, you would say that the two of you have a really comfortable, mutually supportive, solid relationship. Yeah. And it doesn't feel so much like one person is the, I don't know what, the purveyor and the other person is the provider. Yeah, not at all. It's it's absolute synergy. That's sure. really fortunate. That's really nice. Daddy, did you have a question? Go ahead. I did have a question. Um, earlier, Renee said that she's about to embark on doing prints of her work. And I remember you saying that doing prints of original artwork is not on your recommended list of things to do. That is correct. And I didn't, yeah, I don't know, I, I didn't push that, so I don't know precisely what it is Renee is going to be doing if it's prints of her work or new prints or what. Renee, elucidate. Um, okay. You know, this isn't something I've done. I haven't done prints in the past. Um, what I would say to it is, um, or at least, you know, Jennifer's perspective on this is if there is a piece that has gotten a lot of attention from collectors. Um, there, for the show that just came down today at her gallery, there are pieces there that probably could have been sold four times over. And if they've gotten that much attention, you know, even after they've been sold, then the theory is that, you know, maybe this would be something that would be cool to do a print of. And the only thing that we're doing them for is, um, you know, just kind of a, a neat little thing for the holidays. So it's not like I'm going to make a big practice of being a print artist per se, but we want to do it as sort of a special offering for the holidays. And so we're only doing them in editions of 25 and we're pre-selling them. We're not going to just do them, you know, to do them. Does that answer that? I think it answers it, but I mean, I, I, I don't consider those original works of art. I consider them pretty reproductions. They are. They're, they're not intended to be originals. They're meant to be something that's affordable, that might make a nice um, gift, um, just something kind of fun and different to put out there. Okay. Dad, do you want to pursue that further? I just want to hear what your comments are. Paul. Who, me or Renee? Well, your Paul comments on. Oh, well, you're trying to start a fight, aren't you? Um, <laughs> I, I, um, 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 I think I have some problem with it, but it depends on how they're presented and what's done with them. And I mean, I think if they're sold at prices that resemble a glorified poster, it's probably fine. If it's confusing and people feel like they are getting, and then they're going to turn it around and give it as a um, original work of art, I think it isn't. And I would hope that it's done in a manner that isn't particularly confusing, which is, I think, what I hear Renee saying. Um, Renee? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm not trying to, um, you know, 
uh, pull a fast one on anyone. I hope I don't seem like I'm a hack by doing it. Um, I really just wanted to, um, it, it, I, I like the idea of putting something out there that's just kind of um, a fun, easily accessible thing for the holidays. You know, there's been a lot of interest in a lot of these pieces. I'm not going to repaint them. Um, so it's just kind of a, a different approach. I don't know. But I'm not mm -hmm. trying to pawn it off as, as, as an original piece of art. It's, it's a print. It's an ink print. And I'm having them be signed and numbered? Yes. So, Paul, what is your comment on that? I don't know that I want to pursue this that much further, but I'm going to anyway. Um, and I think it should be made clear that they're not original works of art, and I'm not sure how to do that. And I don't know that signing and numbering them is the right thing to do. I would think it would be better to say, maybe on the back of the artwork, if you're going to sign a number and say, this is a reproduction of such and such a painting and the date of the painting and the size of the painting and the material of the painting. Yeah, right. well, I think that's, that's probably the plan. We haven't sold any yet. so. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the idea. It's, it's not a it's not an original piece of art. It's an inkjet. It's an archival inkjet print. I have no hand in it whatsoever. So, not trying to fake anyone. Okay, Dad, are you all right now? Yes, thank you. Cool. Thank you both. Um, Rita, your turn. Rita, go ahead. Great. Thank you for sharing with us, um, Renee. Um, I'm wondering if, from the sounds of it, when you're talking about your relationship with these galleries, um, it sounds like they're affording you more time to spend in your studio. However, I'm wondering if having several galleries in any way, that's taking up the extra time that you would have um, from this wonderful relationship you have with the Chicago Gallery, or I guess I just had a question about your time management. How much is spent administratively, working on your career and how much it spends in the studio? Cool. Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I would say even with all the help that I have, I'm still putting, it, it's probably still 50-50. Okay. Yeah, and, and I wish I, I, I could do more time in the studio, but... Um, but I think we always I wish say, that. <laughs> I, I still believe 50% of my time is spent doing administrative work or marketing myself in some way, without a doubt. It is an add on account. How old are your kids that you took to the opening? How old were they when you took your son? Uh, nine and ten. Okay, that's good. I've got a ten-year-old. He's good. <laughs> do you feel, <laughs> Renee, don't, do you feel like more professional or more responsible given all these things that have happened in your course or in your career, more secure, more aware that, you know, you have a, a career path now that's, you know, sort of working for you? And if that's changed, you know, maybe this is what you're talking about karmically, but that's changing, you know, your attitude about who you are and what you do? Without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, um, for sure. This, You know, just knowing that um, I'm having these incremental successes um, has a huge impact on me. And, and you know, prior to your course, um, I did have the one gallery, and that was a huge, you know, boost for my um, self-esteem. But before that, before I had any gallery, you know, I, I was really not sure that what I was doing was um, good enough. You know, I, I heard a lot of um, comments about my work that, you know, it, it, was, it was half good, half bad. Some people liked it. Some people said it's too dark. Some people said it looks like... I'm squeezing paint from a tube and, you know, or whatever. And I heard all kinds of weird comments that were really just, just crushing. They were crushing. And I um, have spent the greater part of my life second guessing what I'm doing. Um, Are those comments, those negative comments stopped or you just get them in perspective so much more easily? Um, they seem to have stopped, actually. But I, I've always had a pretty decent perspective on these things. You know, I feel pretty confident about the work I'm putting out there, and um, I don't take myself so seriously that that that's going to get me that bent out of shape. I'm doing the best work that I'm capable of doing. Cool, Salva, your turn. Hi, Renee. Um, I'm wondering if you have ever gotten a gallery relationship or or anything of value 
uh, from a cult to artist submission to um, a gallery that you maybe visited when you were out of town but didn't meet the owner or, or maybe saw their website or something and identified it as a place you were interested in. Have you ever gotten anything of value in just giving them a cult submission of, of a, a CD or email or something like that? Um, that's a great question. Um, I would say I've gotten I, I, out of all the ones I've put out there, most of them have been rejections or no calls, no nothing. Um, along the way, um, yes, the answer is yes. I have gotten something out of doing that. Um, but the it, it's so rare. And, you know, just knowing um, what I know now, I don't know that I would bother. Um, and I think the approach is what really makes the difference. So just randomly sending my stuff to any gallery, I wouldn't bother. I absolutely wouldn't do it. That's, you know, just from years of trying different approaches, I just simply wouldn't. Um, I think you need to put the face time in. I think you really need to research what you're doing, meaning, you know, don't just look at a listing of galleries, you know, in, in some city and um, just start sending. You know, you've got to go on every website, look at every artist's work on that website, really study it, um, and, and try to figure out if you really, truly believe your work could fit there. Does, you know, you have to be able to visualize that. And even then, you know, do you just send your stuff? I don't think so. I think you really need to figure out a way to go there in person um, or something or find out where, you know, if they're going to be doing any shows, you've got to meet them. So the one time um, that I had success in doing that, um, uh, actually, Paul, you were there um, <laughs> when you had the, the table at um, Chicago, whatchamacallit, the artist, what was that? Is it the Cultural Center that was Chicago? Um, no? Merchandise, Martin. You had our, all our, our pieces on the one wall. All right. This is, well, this is when I, they gave me some space for Art, at Art Chicago, and I asked all you guys to volunteer if you wanted to, and you and others did. Yeah, yeah. cool. And so there were basically we sat around and just chatted amongst ourselves a lot. But I, something must have happened for Renee that I didn't know about. Go ahead. Okay. Well, so I had um, obviously walked through the show, and there was a gallery that I loved. It's um, It was in. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, and so I just I just loved the, the guys that were working there. I loved the work that they were showing, and without a doubt, I could see my work there. And so I, you know, didn't talk to them too much at the show because that's absolutely the kiss of death. But but we all kind of hit it off just in talking about you know the work that was there and what I do and that sort of thing. Um, so I waited. Was there in that gallery in Paris or something? Um, no, oh, that was a different one. That guy, oh, wow. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, and that guy was, you know, approaching me, but that never worked out anyway. Okay. Um, but the Indianapolis one, I waited a couple months after the show, you know, for the dust to settle and everything. And then I sent them, um, not a formal submission, but I sent the guy um, a letter, you know, a really nicely written letter that was, you know, personal. And um, I just attached, like, maybe two images, I think, and just said, you know, this is what I'm working on right now. Uh, was this an email or a snail mail letter? It was an email. Okay. Um, so just kind of, you know, going back to where we met, you know, just saying, I don't know if you remember me, but we talked for quite a while at Art Chicago, and um, I don't know if you have any shows coming up again up, uh, up this way, but um, I've got a couple shows coming up. These are the dates, and this is what I'm doing. This is the kind of work I'm doing. And, you know, it was something like that. And um, he called me back. So, you know, so he represented me for a short time. The gallery has since closed. <laughs> but um, but it worked, you know. So um, there was nothing so formal about it, you know. Um, that isn't quite cold calling, I don't think. It was. I was working it. <laughs> yeah, you were working it. You were growing a relationship and building your community, but you didn't send slides to somebody out of the no, blue. I don't. I just don't do that. I would never, ever, ever, ever recommend that to anybody. Period. Shalva, you have a follow up. 
No, that's, that, that answers my question. Thank you. Thank you, too. Thanks very much. Um, we have more question. Rita, take your hand down unless you have another one. Therese, go ahead. Hello, Renee. Can you hear me okay? Yep, you're a little loud, but we'll deal with it. Go ahead. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, sorry about that. It's, it's never a happy medium, is it? Um, uh, anyways, I wanted to tell you that I really enjoy your work, and I really, really like the uh, the ink pieces. Those are quite interesting to me. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. I'm looking at your site, and I'm looking at kind of your first page, which sort of has a little bit of background on it, and you say here that you started your own gallery, and I'm I'm just kind of curious as to the relationships that you built while you had that gallery? Are these relationships that you have carried into your time now? Um, and are were these people that championed you and helped you to get where you are now? I mean, how important are these re, uh, past relationships in, in your position now? Um, absolutely. Um, there are some people who um, really helped me out along the way. One of them, um, Renee McGinnis has been a friend of mine for a long time. I showed her work in my gallery. I never showed my own work in my gallery, by the way. Um, but I showed my friend Renee's work, and um, there were several other artists. Um, Renee has always been just an amazing supporter and friend. And, um, a, a, you know, she she's always been kind of my partner in crime. Like, we've always gone to art galleries together, like openings and things like that. And all of that has been hugely helpful along the way because you've got to put in the face time, like I said. So nurturing all these relationships with all these local galleries. And then um, we've traveled together um, to go to Art Basel or to New York or whatever. So, you know, I have a partner in crime, so to speak, going to all of these, you know, things. Um, other than her, um, other um, people in the business, Carl Hammer. Carl used to come to my gallery um, openings and He's somebody that I, I just adore and, and trust, and he's You should explain that Carl is an art dealer who has a gallery in Chicago. Yes, he is. I guess well, you don't have to now. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I forget that you're not all here in Chicago. Um, so, yeah, Carl Hammer is a, a longtime dealer here in Chicago and very, very respected. Um, and so he's always been a very – um, good person to have in that kind of relationship because I've got somebody that's honest and pragmatic that, you know, he's the sounding board. I can always just mm -hmm. tell him what's going on. And along the way, you know, I, I, I would have loved for him to represent me, but mm. my work would never fit in his gallery, you know, yeah. and he always made that really clear to me. Uh, not not that specifically, but, you know, when he and I would talk about, you know, where should I go? What should I do to get represented? I never asked him if he would represent me. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we would talk about different galleries and why what would work and one one wouldn't work, you know. So that's a great relationship that I got from that. Um, other than that, you know, um, um, just having owned it put me out there socially and, and got a lot of people to know me and get to know my name and um, and so I've just How long did you have a gallery, Renee? Um, I had it for about a year and a half, almost two years. And how long has it been since? It's been let's see, that was nineteen ninety eight. So it's, so it's been a decade about anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. It's a lot of fun though. Very expensive, but a lot of fun. <laughs> Yeah, bad habit. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, Therese. Um, Karen, take it away. Okay. Hi, I like your work too very much. Thank you. And I was wondering if you give different work to the different galleries, like um, or if you have similar work in the various galleries. Um, I, I notice that you do different form. I mean, you have the ink, you've got the painting, you've got sculpture. Are you showing all of these in all of the galleries, um, like, or or are you dividing it up so that one gallery it shows like your specialty might be the sculpture and another the painting, etc. Really good question. Um, I am for the most part just dividing it up um some of it is based on size 
So the Miami Gallery can accommodate really large pieces. So most of my big work goes down there. Um, Palm Beach, um, sort of a combination, um, but she's just to, still not doing that much business. So I don't send her too much. Um, you know, that one, um, that's kind of what I'm thinking about, Paul, in terms of um, sort of re-strategizing. If I do get another gallery, you know, I might need to eliminate one. And she just hasn't been doing that much business, so that one might need to change um, as much as I love her. Um, Chicago, um, it's a small gallery, so she, and she can't accommodate even storing much work. So work tends to be on the smaller side, although the show I just did was large pieces, which was pretty challenging, um, uh, as well as sculpture. So all my sculpture is in the Chicago Gallery. Well, that, um, this is the first time you've shown or you've shown sculpture. Yes. The sculpture is new, and all of that is just uh, staying in Chicago for the time being. And then Paris, um, it's going to be all works on paper for now. How much paper? I didn't know you did that much paperwork when we did a studio visit like a year and a half, two years ago. <clears throat> Have you done much on paper? Yeah, I've always done work on paper. Um, I, pro I must not have pulled that out for you. I, I tend to keep that all, you know, on the side. But um, the, the show in Paris, um, we decided to do all works on paper because the um, obviously Tony works with paper. Um, there are two other artists that are going to be in that show, and they also work on paper. So we decided to do a, just a whole show of works on paper. That makes sense. Are you shipping things framed? No. Um, well, we're still we're still working that out. Actually, we, Jennifer was just talking about framing them and then sending them, but not putting glass in them. So I'm not sure. We're still working it out. Okay. <clears throat> I'm losing track here. Karen, thank you. Um, I think we're on to Laura. Laura, your turn. Um, yeah, I I have a question. It was it's maybe a little bit um, behind on thoughts now, but um, earlier you were talking about how with your work you um, are you kind of like it seems like it was all a little bit wavy and you were getting a um, some negative comments and and just it was like sort of a mixed bag. And then um, now you don't really get that as much. Um, I was wondering if your thought process had changed um, in between, like the time when you got your first gallery um, to now, um, and going through the course and sort of uh, thinking about, um, like, I want to make work that fits into like these categories or does these things interestingly, or um, my work, what's interesting about you know, what's going on with it in these is really what I want to pull out um, to build upon. So um, does that make enough sense or I can sort of um, elaborate that a little more? Well, I can try and answer it from there. I, I would say that I've never been a very, you know, academic thinker in terms of my work. Um, um, so I'm not trying to convey any particular message necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't get too hung up on that stuff. but. Um, the one prevailing thought that continues to go through my mind, and I think I think I did get a lot of this from taking the course, is to just never put anything out there that isn't my best. So I'm not trying to rush anything. I'm not trying to just put something out there for the sake of selling it or anything like that. I'm just constantly really thinking about what I've just created, and if it's not what I think is the best that I can do, I start over. Does that answer that? Oh, I think so. I think um, maybe it's, it's become more of like an evolution of uh, quality and standards and, and those sort of thoughts within that. I think, I think before, I, I was challenged before with trying to figure out what my message should be or could be and trying to um, bring it together with different things. One of the things um, I, I picked up along the way in the first course was one of the speakers that um, we were listening to was um, talking about how to, um, I, I think it had something to do with how to do a good show, you know, or something like that. And, and what she was saying was um, try to link your work to something that's going on in current events or something like that. And, um, 
So I was thinking kind of creatively at one point, this is probably a couple years ago now, a year ago, whatever, um, about what I do. You know, I do have a, an underlying message in my work. You know, I, there, the, my work is about something, but it's always kind of been personal. You know, I didn't, I, I've never felt a need to sit and elaborate on, you know, why I do what I do um, in terms of, you know, the, the work. You know, the work is very spiritual. It's about women. It's about um, whatever it is. But I never really took it beyond that. And when um, whoever it was that was speaking in that first session was was saying, well, you know, what makes something really comprehensive and of of interest to people? You know, you, if you want to capture somebody's attention, um, you've got to link it to something that people can can readily you know get. And so I was thinking about my work at one point um, soon after that, and I realized that my work isn't just solely you know this personal um, journey. It's about um, everyone's journey, and it's about, you know, so so the, the women stuff, and it, it has to do with, you know, the spiritual power of women and that sort of thing. Well, it's not just me. I'm not the only, you know, all-powerful being. It's about all of the women who have endured, you know, hardship. And I was reading the newspaper, and there was, you know, Afghani women who were setting themselves on fire to escape abuse. There's, you know, uh, just on and on, on and on. And so I was thinking like that, um, and that was a whole new way of thinking for me, um, just, you know, relating my work to other things. And, and I think that that's really made a big difference. You know, it kind of pulled me out of myself a little bit. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, that, that makes a lot of sense, and I, I think, um, yeah, that makes sense. And then, but then have you changed the way that you present it? Um, so say, like, now that you've had all these thoughts, you know, in the past year, like, do you change it, like, through your titles or through your artist statement, or is that just more, like, of an internalized sort of, like, second layer that is more of a conversation that happens one-on-one -on -one with someone? I, I think it's more the latter. Yeah. Okay. It's just more of an internal realization, you know. Cool. That's good. That answered all my questions and then some. <laughs> all right. I want, I want some of you other people who haven't asked questions. Oh, sorry, I was picking it down. <laughs> <laughs> I want some, you, you can go ahead. I want some of these people who haven't asked questions all that often. Nika, Mark, um, Dimitri, you do. You always have them, but you don't tonight yet, huh? Andy, some of you other people. Um, all right, and who else? Philip, in particular. I don't hear from Philip anywhere near enough. Philip, you have a question. I'm, balls in your court. Philip, are you there? Aha. Well, that explains why I didn't have a question. All right, Karen, while we're pushing others, you go ahead. Hey, a um, couple questions. One is, it's a follow-up of the other one. Because you do different media, is, do you find it harder to market the work, or do they complement each other? I mean, do you find that you have to do things a little bit differently for each medium? That's the first question. And the second one is, how did you originally decide on pricing, and did the gallery owners help you with raising your prices? And, and were they, did they give you suggestions? Um, okay. The different mediums. Um, I, all of my work definitely, um, they all flow together. The, the techniques are different with each thing. Um, you know, sculpting is obviously very different from, from painting, but my approach to sculpting and my approach to painting are the same. Um, so when you put the two together, you can, you can, I think it's really clear that I've done both. Um, the India inks, you know, same thing. I try to attain a certain level of, of texture and, you know, overall uh, look so that it, it makes sense with the rest of my work. So I think everything is um, remaining distinctive enough, um, you know, that it that it's easily attributed to me and and my way of doing things. Um, as far as pricing goes, um, I determined my pricing early on based on um, just simple math, um, which it has to be simple for me because I'm really bad at it. 
but um, my cost of materials and the time that I put in. Um, but it was commensurate with my um, experience. So, you know, have I sold any work? Um, if I've sold it, have I sold anything in the size that I'm looking at? You know, so track record is, is kind of a determining thing. Um, I would say early on my profit was a lot less, but now that I'm having trouble hanging on to work, it's, it's selling faster than I can paint it, um, that has to be a determining factor in how it's priced. Um, my galleries, um, between the, the four of them, they collectively determine the pricing because they need to be consistent with one another. Um, so before I, you know, if I do a new size piece of work, you know, we'll, we'll talk to each gallery and see what, what they've got things at or what they've sold things at. Ideally, at this point, you know, I, I mean, I, I've sold a lot of work. So ideally now I look at what things have sold for in the past. And um, the prices don't go up that much. I think it, it's really, um, it's just based on how much work has sold. I can't hear you. No, I thank you. Karen, I'm sorry, I muted myself so I could cough. I apologize. So Karen, mm -hmm. in regards to your first question, I think there's a distinction between making art in different media on the same subject and making art in different subjects in the same medium or even different medium, okay? So that clearly Renee's talking about things that I think are cohesive and that the drawings, the paintings, and the sculpture are all recognizably, well, I guess for lack of a better term, the same motif. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. um, um, I'm sorry, did you, did you have more oh, to I say? Was, I was just going to say, um, do the galleries talk with each other or do you talk to each gallery owner individually and like you're the hub of the network or do they just like do they discuss your work among themselves usually i'm the go-between um in in most situations um only recently have we had um situations come up where um jennifer for example needs to deal with the gallery in miami because somebody saw an article in a magazine and looked up my work. They went into the gallery here in Chicago. They liked the work fine, but they wanted to see more. So they looked on my website. Um, they found something on the website that was at uh, my Miami gallery. So they contacted the Miami gallery. But this is, you know, so now they're like in this, the, do we split the commission kind of a thing. And so they're, they do have to talk with each other at that point. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Um, I think we've got time for the three more hands that are up. Know, maybe we don't even, but let's do it anyway. Mika, I saw you first. Go ahead, Mika. Um, of your collectors, uh, how much do they want of you, and um, do they ever ask for a specific commission, and would you do that? Um, how much do they want of me? Um, well, most collectors that I have do own more than one piece. I'm not sure if that answers that question, but um, I, I, I would say, you know, the average amount that any collector of my work has is probably three pieces. Um, commissions, I do a lot. And I, I continue to get calls for that all the time. They see a piece, it's not the size that they wanted. Can I do something similar in the same palette? Um, or whatever, I, I get them all the time. And I actually really like doing them. I think it it, um, um, it just keeps me very accessible. Cool, Thank you. Thank you. Um, Linda, go ahead. Hi, Renee. Um, I had a question about um, how much time you actually go and produce in a year. And if that adds up to actually making a living with the, on your art, or do you have to hold a day job? How did that work for you? Um, well, I've always made a living off of my art. Um, I've, I've made ends meet um, many years ago by bartending or waitressing or things like that, but I've never had a day job. Um, I've always made it my objective to make a living doing art. So, you know, that translated to different kinds of art along the way. You know, I was doing murals and faux finishes for a while, but I was happy because I had a paintbrush in my hand. Um, 
but right now I definitely um, I do make a living off of my art. I do pretty well with it, and um, I do produce a lot of it. I'm probably in the studio around 30 hours a week. Um, uh, absolutely every day that my kids are in school, I'm uh, I'm in the studio. Uh, on the weekends, I spend probably, you know, almost the entire day on Sundays in the studio. So on average, it comes out to around 30 hours a week. Um, how much do I produce in a year? A lot. I paint a lot. I produce a lot of work. Was it a problem? Is it a problem being an artist and a mom? <laughs> it's not a problem for me. I would say it's um, an absolute blessing. I think my kids have um, transformed me in a monumental way in, in terms of um, my approach to things. And if anything, they've made me better at it because um, uh, me doing what I'm doing makes them really proud. And oh, that's cool. it, it keeps me driven, you know, I can't back down. I can't, you know, sit and ponder being a failure or anything like that because my kids are watching, you know, so I got to keep at it. That's good motivation. All right, Dimitri, you get the last question. Take it away. Uh, thanks, Renee. Uh, I have a question about your um, website. You said you hired someone, and I've been saying to myself for the last probably two years, I need a different website. Um, how did it work for you? Did you have a vision and you took it to those people? Um, was it back and forth? Did they offer a, a, a vision? Was it a dialogue? And also, how do you decide how much work to keep on your website? It seems like there is a lot there. And uh, if you could just uh, say uh, about your website, thanks. And if you could recommend, actually, the people you work with, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. I can um, put together an email for all of you um, with uh, recommendations on who I use for everything from websites to social media and all of that stuff. Um, the website thing, um, the, uh, the photographer that I mentioned, um, his assistant actually um, was just kind of playing around making websites, like just for a sideline to make extra money. And she built one for me as um, kind of a template so that she could say she's built websites. And what she was doing, I fell in love with. And I was like, it's completely unique. It's totally different than this WordPress thing that I had. And it's so much more in line with what I want as an artist. I don't want something that's a template-based program that anybody can go and duplicate. I wanted something unique. And she nailed it. And so we um, ended up just getting together and, and started customizing it a little bit. And um, um, so I'm really happy with it. It's it's still, you know, we're still working through some of it, but I think it's, it's a really beautiful website. Um, so I will definitely pass on her information because I think it's, it's absolutely worth it to have somebody that can do that for you. Definitely cool. Dimitri, thank you. Renee, I really appreciate your generosity. I'm unmuting everybody so you can be the victim of all this applause, Renee. Hey, this has been great. I hope everybody else has found it helpful, too. I think it's been really uh, accessible and shows possibility. Thank you very much. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.